strength on timbers. Well, that must be a 10 kilo lump. Do you want to get into spraying? You want a spray booth that's really simple, easy to clean, easy to maintain over the years, something that's not going to cost you the earth. What you see behind me is probably the booth that you want to go for. Today, I'm going to be going over everything from the grid to the fans, to the turntable, everything that you see behind me. But the main point of this video is to show you the wall covering. And that is the clever part of this spray booth. I'm going to be showing you what it's made of and why you want to use it yourself. We're gonna be bringing this spray booth back to life because three years ago, it used to look like this, and now it looks like this. So today's video is mainly about cleaning it back, showing you how easy it is to get this paint off the walls in no time at all. If you're interested, stay tuned, watch to the end, and I hope you enjoy. This grid is perfect for not trailing the paint all over your floor. All, most of the paint probably 70% drops through the bottom, meaning that you don't get it on your boots and walk it round. As you can see, it's got a lot of build up. And to be honest, it's a lovely natural pattern. It's a bit like art, to be honest. Let me tell you a little bit about this booth. Uh, basically, I built it three years ago. I've made it about 3.6 meters long, and I made it with a return wall. Firstly, to give me a, a section here for my spray paints, a sink, storage, uh, basically, places to keep my tools and equipment, bits and pieces. Um, but it creates that little indentation for the fans to work a little bit more efficiently, I guess. It's like a little alcove for that air and the overspray to be um, sucked straight through into the fans. These fans are just basically, they're flat. This is a stud wall and it's just simply a cutout with a little OSB frame, which is 50 mil deep because these filters are 50 mil. And it is as simple as that. So you've got sizes to choose from. If you go on my description, you'll see. Um, I've gone for a 450. You've got one here, one over there. And the idea behind that is it's just going to suck out the paint equally. I put them down to the floor rather than up above because I found as I'm spraying, overspray wants to drop to the floor, especially using airless. With airless, the droplets are a lot heavier than HVLP. HVLP is overspray everywhere. As you can see, three years of spraying, there is nothing. And let's just touch the surface. So something here that's not been touched. Well, those fingers were black to start with. Um, but there's nothing there at all. And what I'm trying to get to is um, airless spraying gives you a lot heavier overspray. It sinks to the bottom, hence the reason the fans are there. I've got a little bar at the top, that's for hanging lightweight bits and pieces, nothing too heavy. My turntable is just handmade and I've just made it splayed so it doesn't rock. Splayed the legs, made this myself, and I covered it in handy wrap plastic. Because right now, today, we're gonna be cleaning back. I thought, well, if I just um, wrap it in handy wrap, I could just literally get a Stanley knife and clean it back. There you go, you can see nothing likes to stick to plastic. And um, that is the idea behind me. I'm gonna get a Stanley knife and score it all and it should be brand new underneath. So the spray booth here, um, I built three years ago, and I think I've averaged about 30 medium-sized jobs a year. So let's just say 90 jobs I've done, and I'm gonna just estimate I spray about 10 litres per job. Probably more, to be honest. The last job I did, which was three pieces, that took 30 litres. So I'm just gonna do a low average of, I think I've done about 1,000 litres on this spray booth without cleaning or tidying without taking any of the overspray off the walls. And I think it's fared quite well, because as you can see above me, there is literally no overspray. And this is where somebody came and sprayed the corner of my wall, bloody idiot. Um, but there is no overspray. You can see the OSB straight through. And as I spray for three years, it's only gone as far as halfway up. And that's me going really mad with the sprayer sometimes and not caring. The strands that you can see are mainly just spider webs, and the strands that you can see on the floor like this are mainly just from my filters where I just chuck them on the floor and they get stuck. It does not matter whatsoever because this is the whole point of this booth. It just gets stuck at the bottom. It can't go anywhere. So it doesn't matter what it looks like as long as the booth is doing its job from keeping the dust away from my work and keeping the overspray or the dust away from anything in here any of my racks, 
because we've got rack there and we've got a couple of racks over there. So let's just go over everything I've got. So we've got the grid and these are for driveways, you know, so you just sink them into the grass and you drive over them and the grass can grow through them. So I'm not really too sure what they're called. I've got three square meters worth there and that should be perfect for what you need. Um, it's not that expensive. Um, we just had a bit of timber lying around um, for, the, for the actual table. So yeah, um, the turntable here, it's just handmade. Um, you could buy one or you could just use any old table as long as it's stable. So I think it's time to clean all of this paint off now. Um, been itching to do it. Let's get cracking. Right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is just move my guns. Clear that out of the way. They could be cleaned at a later date. Not worried about that. I will end up just cleaning these spit buckets out. Again, this spit bucket here has not been emptied for three years. Let's get rid of all of these filters. Don't need those anymore. This has been sprayed on for three years. And this is simply a bit of Corex. And the reason I picked this is because look how caked up it is, all right? It's been dripping off there for many a years. And that is why I used Corex for the walls. Because the paint simply peels off and it's back to new again in no time at all. And I'm hoping it comes off that easily on the walls because that is what all of these walls are made of. Corex, plastic. Floor protection, anything that, um, the stuff that you get from your builder's merchants. Okay, I'm gonna flip this bench over. Look at that. That is half a finger deep. What's half a finger? Inch and a half? And you can see all those layers. Wow, that is truly amazing. I'm hoping that that peels off really quick. I think I'm gonna have to get myself a spreader, a scraper to get it off. I think the first thing I'm actually gonna do is stand this table up and get a Stanley knife and cut back all the plastic and then clean it up so I can get rid of the table. Then I'm gonna get rid of the grid. It's like looking through rock, million year old rock. Oh, that's even better, look. How cool is that? So let's lift it up and see what we've got. I have not lifted this up once. Hey, look at the squares. How cool is that? Grid is out. Chucked it outside, gonna dust it off. Nothing wrong with the grid. I'll just put that back a bit later. And this is what I mean about using Corex. Look at that clump. That's a kilo. Did I need to replace the floor? No. Brand new. Wow. How cool is that? Look at the size of that. It's like an iceberg. So, Five minutes in, and this is where I am. I started at the front, seemed like I wasn't getting anywhere because it's more oversprayed dust. Oh look, I peel it from there. Ah, that's where I'm going wrong. Peel it from the back. Satisfaction level 100. You gotta see this up close. This has not been touched for three years and it's just coming off like it's just been there for five minutes. You can even see the pattern of the Corex or the lines. Really hoping the walls come off this easily also. Need my hands back. I'm gonna put it back on the tripod. So yeah, I thought, seeing as I've got fans, why not use them? Got an old shovel. Look at 
Look at that. How cool is that? Probably best that it breaks up into little pieces. Ooh, ah, strength on timbers. Well, that must be a 10 kilo lump. See, it seems that where the fans are, I'm getting thicker overspray. Not a lot over the front, five mil. Back, maybe even as high as 40 mil. Okay, so I think I'm gonna tackle this wall now. I'm gonna give it a go with a shovel, see what happens. Wow. Look at that. That should be in the Tate Gallery. Anyone else agree? Like a rug, anyone want a rug? Oh, there we have it, all done. Probably took me about an hour and a half, but ultimately I didn't have to replace the plastics. I was thinking to myself, even if I did want to replace the plastics, I'd still have to get rid of all the paint off of it first. I'd say there was a good 50, 60 kilos worth of overspray blocks from the floors and the walls and wall. And yeah, I've gone for about 10 bags. So yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and I filled up most of that bin, which I'll take to the dump. Um, and this is what we got. I'm not gonna go all the way back, no point. It's just a little bit of tiny, it's just a bit of dust really. Nothing much left. It's, it's pointless scratching that back. For aesthetics point of view, I think I'm absolutely fine. I'm not gonna replace the plastic around here. I scraped off, off most of it around the borders and I've cleaned up the fans a little bit. But other than that, Benches over there, nice and clean. Walls are nice and clean. Grid, not gonna worry about. I'm gonna bring that back in. I think there's, there's time to put everything back in and uh, and yeah, let's get this back to new-ish condition. Yeah, in the meantime, I knock over a bucket of dirty paint water. Lovely. Right, time to bring in all the bits and pieces. First, I'll bring in the grid. I need to put some MDF underneath it again to stop the prongs digging into the Corex and ruining it as I walk on it. I'm not going to bother cleaning it. It's only light dust. As I walk on it, it, it comes off anyway. Let's put the MDF strips under. <laughs> yeah. Happy days. Bring in the bench. It's still got little light marks where it used to be. So that's gonna go there. And that's gonna go there. Remember, before I finish, all I'm gonna do is go around with some handy wrap. And that's what saved my bench last time. It's gonna take me 10 minutes but it just means in the next year or two when I want to clean up again, it means that I could just peel it all back off and it'd be brand new again straight away. And last but not least, tub where I leave my guns. Here, I've got a bucket and in the bucket, 
I've got another tub. So when I, if I do make a mess, it's gonna spill into the bucket rather than going all over the floor. Two guns, I simply just put the tips into the water, nothing else but the tips. And that is the two guns sorted turntable. Remember, before I start spraying, I am just gonna go over any loose bits of duct tape that have come loose for next time. There's only a couple of little bits. I didn't dig into the Corex at all. Remember, this is called Corex floor protection. The white stuff is more expensive. Black is cheaper, but I needed white for the light. Yes, yeah, so I'm just gonna cover this in handy wrap, do the masking tape on any bits that have come loose, put some Corex on the top here, wrap that on with handy wrap, and away we go. So, one spray room completely clean and tidy. DIY spray booth using Corex and some timber. Very, very simple. All you need to do is add the fans to those. For those, I'll leave a link in the description below. A little cooking turntable and a bench. Happy days. Oh, and also some filters. So, I'm gonna leave it that, guys. Got things to do. Take it easy. If you enjoyed the video, like and subscribe. Take it easy. Bye for now.